It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. David Harrison here of the Locked On Washington Commanders podcast to share with you that U.S. Cellular has some great news, especially for you, the person listening to this podcast. Right now, you can get one line with unlimited data for just $29.99. So unlike other cell networks, you won't have to pay for lines you don't need just to get that good price. Get one line for $29.99 with unlimited data today. U.S. Cellular built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. We are back, baby. It's the Monday edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And as promised, we got the weekend roundup of a very, very busy couple of days in the NHL. Fantasy implications abound, and that means your fantasy hockey team is on the bubble. Let's get right to it for this Monday episode. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hockey heads, fantasy fanatics, and degenerate gamblers, welcome back to your source for fantasy hockey news, the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Happy Monday. It's a tough Monday for a lot of people out there. No one wants to go back to work. But when there's this much news in the news realm of the NHL and fantasy hockey steal, you and I are fired up. And this is when we have a lot of things to take a look at here. Colorado, Ryan Johansson. What does it mean for his value? What's going on in Nashville? Is it going to be a sell-off? I want to ask you a few questions there. The LA Kings, perhaps most intriguingly. Sean Dursey going to the Arizona Coyotes. Pierre-Luc Dubois, soon to be in La La Land. We'll break that down as well. And lastly, Carolina Hurricanes making some noise, securing the captain. D'Angelo may be on the move. We'll talk about that as well, Steele. I want to turn it right over to you because I know we are going to run out of time today because there's also so much more to talk about. So make sure you're tuning in all week long. Yeah, the, 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 this is already a crazy start to the offseason. Danny Barrera oh, yeah. has just been all over the place with his right. trades in Philadelphia. We were seeing a few trades already leak in and some rumors about some big names out there, like you mentioned, Pierre-Luc Dubois. But yeah. the first trade to get everything really going this weekend or this past weekend mm-hmm. was Ryan Johansson from the Nashville Predators traded to the Colorado Avalanche for Alex Galchenyuk. Uh, 50% of his contract is being retained by the Nashville Predators. So uh, they're still paying half his salary, $4 million, because his hit, his contract is at eight. So overall, I like the trade from both sides. Colorado has been talking about finding one of their bottom six depth centermen, and I think Ryan Johansson brings that, maybe a second-line centerman as well. Um, uh-huh. And I think this just clears up the cap space for the Nashville Predators. We already talked about this a few episodes ago. They now, they're now up to $20 million in cap space. So mm. uh, just create some more flexibility for them this draft, this offseason. Maybe they can bring in some depth players. I really like their roster, actually. It might be a little bit of a regression. <laughs> uh, obviously, they missed the playoffs. I was high on them last year. I thought they would be a dark yeah. horse, but I like their I like their their roster right now. They still got Duchesne and Forsberg and UC Soros up in the air with Soros right now. He could be a mm-hmm. goalie to keep an eye on. Their defenseman, yeah. look, they had a down year. We've talked about this. Everyone had a down year. They were injured, riddled with injuries, but you look at some of their young pieces. I, I find this team very intriguing because guys are going to get a big opportunity. You see yep. Parson, who had his first year in the NHL, 25 points mm-hmm. in 45 games. He'll probably be that top line center with Forsberg and Duchesne. So he's a guy that I'm going to keep an eye out uh, to see where he falls into mm-hmm. the lineup now that Johansson's mm-hmm. been moved. You got Philip Tomasino, uh, Thomas Novak, and, and Cody, Cody Glass. Glass. Cody yep. Glass, who fills in that bottom six uh, center position as well. So there's a lot of young pieces for Nashville. They have some cap space. They have a ton of draft picks. I'm very excited to see what Nashville does with this this offseason. I like that you took the Nashville angle here because I think the most obvious one and where most people are probably looking is what does this mean for the you know Stanley Cup chance from only one year ago? We know they were banged up up front. Uh, yeah. We know they also lost Nas. We've had the off-ice issues with Nashushkin. Ryan Johansson before this, you know, maybe even the season before, like he was pretty durable for the most part of his career. And I know he's now faced some injury issues over the last couple, 
Um, I don't, this is a really tough one for me, Steele, is what I wanted to take for his fantasy projection. I'm I'm really mm-hmm. uncertain. I want to say, you know, the initial reaction is he's going to Colorado. He's going to get in the mix in the top six. It makes sense. It's a more offensive club. I yeah. think it's going to point in the direction of he might be a good look, like maybe right at the back, like last round, second yeah. last round when you need to fill like a bench spot. I just really don't know. I don't know what you feel about that take because also, you know, his injuries have been, I think the injury he had was pretty serious. I forget what it was, yeah. but he doesn't bring the peripherals. You know, yeah. the offensive down is down. The foot speed is down. He's going to be 31 this year. I'm just a little wary of what it means. Is it a good move? I think for the depth of the Colorado avalanche. Yes. I just really don't know what it means for his fantasy value. If you know what I'm saying. I think his fantasy value remains the same or even uh, regresses Maybe that's a little bit. Means, yeah. I, I I think you're exactly right. I could see him being a draft pick in the later stages, round 16, 17, 18. Maybe even a guy that isn't drafted, depending on your league. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end For of sure. last season, he was only rostered between 8 and 15% on Yahoo and ESPN fantasy yeah. leagues. And like you said, a big thing, a big thing that I always keep my eyes on for are the peripheral stats. Just because he goes out and gets 27 goals and 63 mm-hmm. points, uh, which yeah. he did the year prior, where he almost played a full season, the peripheral right. stats still aren't there. Just no. over 115 shots, yeah. 35 blocks, 72 hits. Again, mm-hmm. if you're talking about Ryan Johansson from over a decade ago when he was with Columbus, that's the type Ooh. of Johansson I want to draft. Right. But now, 22 year old Ryan Joe. Yeah, he's at a stage in his career. He's going to be 31 years old at the end of July. Um, yep. The injuries have been a problem for him over the past mm-hmm. four seasons. Um, and again, he's just the type of guy that he does bring a lot to your team depth-wise, but fantasy-wise, the peripheral stats are a big, big part of the uh, a big part of the fantasy leagues, and that's a big problem for me. And also, the I think the most glaring issue is aside from the injury is he's going to have a reduced role. He was that number one top line center in Nashville and they were clicking Forsberg, Duchesne and Rijo for a season. You know, last season there was a chunk where I think you and I love to tell that was the most productive fantasy line for a number of weeks in a row when they were on a heater. So we know he can bring it big question mark for me is where I wanted to leave this with Ryan Johansson because I, you know, I mentioned maybe he's like your last round flyer because maybe, maybe he fits right in, you know, maybe Nishushin comes back and, you know, on the wing, he has a good guy, you know, maybe someone there's chemistry there. You know what I'm saying? Like with the new team and it is the Colorado avalanche, their blue line is one of the best in the business. They're going to win a lot of games. So at the end of it all, the dominoes are starting to fall in the NHL here, Steele. And I think one of the takeaways that I had when I was thinking about today's episode is we saw the master class put on by McPhee, uh, McCarron, and Foley in Vegas over the last year and a half. Maestros with the moves. Teams have taken note. You can't just sit idly by. You're going to have to take some risks. You're going to have to make some moves. That's what we're seeing across the league. That's what Steele and I are going to continue to break down all week long, including on today's episode, Sean Dursey, one of my favorite young players. You know, I got a few takes on this Dursey situation, (laughs) Steele. Also, I want to know what you think if Pierre-Luc Dubois actually goes to LA. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Carolina Hurricanes, but... Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the exact same when it comes to your ride. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts or accessories, you got to head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right prices on ebaymotors.com the first time around. Let's ride. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. There's no off-season for the true NHL fan, and there are no off-days for Locked On NHL. This off-season, Locked On NHL has you taken care of. In just 30 minutes every day, Locked On NHL will give you the latest on all the fireworks of the NHL offseason. 
Locked On NHL, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We appreciate all the support you show us yep. every single day. And after today's show, be sure to check out Locked On's 2023 NHL Mock Draft Special, the local host of the Locked On NHL channel have made their picks and host Gil Martin and Hattie Kalakesh break down every selection over a three-day mock draft event. Find the episodes on Locked On NHL and on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. It's going to be a crazy week in the NHL, yeah. of course. Um, the NHL Draft Award, or the NHL Draft, the NHL Awards all happen this mm-hmm. weekend. Uh, or throughout this week, and of course, obviously, Connor Bedard going to be the number one overall pick, generational hey. talent. I'm excited hey. to see the trades, uh, the you know draft Me selection too. trades or trades that happen during the draft. So it's uh, going to get very, crazy, I think. Still, it, it's going to be a very crazy off season. But some things have already happened so far that we yep. need to talk about. One of them being Sean Dursey being traded from the L.A. Kings to the Arizona Coyotes, and Oof. and. The first thought, the first thought was... You thought of me, didn't you? I thought of you. you. Then you thought of me. I I thought of you right away. I was like, wow, Flip is going to lose his mind on this trade. Yeah, I just... I Look, it's hard to say, right? Because we know other moves are coming. And we'll let's talk about that in a second. But first of all, I talk a lot about the players that I tend to like. This is what happens when you listen to this show. And Sean Jersey was one of them. He made the most of his opportunity with Doughty being down. They have a really good balanced blue line in LA. And I think this is just speaks to that, right? They're able to move Jersey. And what's being rumored is again, we'll break that down in a sec. Gabriel Velarde in a package going to the Winnipeg Jets for Pierre Luc Dubois. So this is why this kind of makes sense, right? Steel, they get a second round pick back, which I think is also hit me with your take on this. You don't see many players his age getting traded for a second rounder, right? Like usually it's a third, a fourth when it's a straight swap. So I think that's one thing to remember. That's how much he's valued. And number two, I want you to tell me what you think. I'll tell you in a sec. What do you think this does for his fantasy value? Because my initial reaction was to say it takes a hit, but he might log a whole ton of minutes. He might play with JJ Moser, You know, Vimelka and Ingram are going to run it back as the tandem. They just signed Ingram steal. This Coyotes team is not as bad as people want to think they are. I completely agree. I don't think they're as bad as people uh, think they are as well. I'm looking at the lineup. I actually do like the top six In the cage especially. In In the the cage cage especially. But I I really do like the top six in Arizona. Keller, Schmaltz, Barrett, Hayden. I'm really excited to see what Barrett and Hayden does on the top line in between Schmaltz and Keller. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that... I looked at a little bit last year, didn't want to take a flyer on him or right. even draft him. This will be a guy that I'm looking towards this year, towards the later ends of the draft because of the guys that he's playing with. Yeah. But they're not as bad. And they've got some great prospects and guys that are very young right now, like Jack McBain, mm. Dylan Gunther, Matthias Michelli, who we talked Gunther's about. Gunther's pretty sweet. He's year. looking good. Very sweet. What are your so, thoughts on this situation, though, for uh, my boy here? Uh, I think Dursey's going to get a bump. What do you think? I, I agree. I think Sean Dursey will be playing with either Valimaki or JJ Moser. We saw yeah. on Arizona Coyotes power play unit mm-hmm. that they went with Jakob Chikrin and Shane Goshespair, mm-hmm. two defensemen, which isn't uh, very common now in the NHL. So we could see True. both defensemen True. on the power True. play. I completely agree. He's 24 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just looking, he's only been in the NHL for two years now. Two right. years, he has 65 points in 136 games. The peripheral stats are there. Or the peripheral stats are a little there. 142 mm-hmm. blocks, 68 hits. They're getting better and better every year yeah. as well. They're pretty solid points. And he was playing almost, almost 20 minutes at average last year with the LA Kings. So I see it getting bumped up as well. I actually think his fantasy mm-hmm. value improves. I think so too. 50 penalty minutes as well, Steele. And actually he had 55 in less games the year before. He plays with a bit of edge. You know, uh, he was all over social media. I don't think he's exactly happy about how things have shaken out. But I think it's actually going to do really good things for his career. And of course, his fantasy value. And maybe more importantly, we know this is going to lead to a next move. It's all over social media. 
it's rumored that it's Gabe Velarde and maybe other pieces yeah. for Pierre Luc Dubois. Let's talk about that for a sec because you and I have you know gushed all over the LA Kings. I can't help but feel that Quinton Byfield is going to have to be a part of that package. I think he's going to, you know, if they're going to acquire a talent like that, that's my opinion. What do you think about this if they do get Dubois and what are they going to have to pay? It's it's definitely going to cost a lot. And just looking at cap friendly right now, the LA Kings, they only have four defensemen under roster because they traded Sean Walker a couple of weeks ago to the Philadelphia Flyers as well. They right. just traded Sean right. Dursey. They've only got four mm-hmm. defensemen under contract. Alexander Edler is a UFA. They might try to re-sign Yeesh. him for dirt cheap. Very dirt cheap, but I, I it's going to cost a lot. I think Velarde, I'm not sure... Maybe they can throw in a few picks in there. They don't have many picks to throw in, but if you're going after no. a guy like Pierre Luc Dubois, mm. Winnipeg is going to want to get the most out of him. And they're obviously we've talked about it. They're going to get the most out of Hellebuck if he's traded. The most yep. out of Pierre Luc Dubois, not for as sure. much for Shifley, but he's still a great asset to any team. They yep. might. I I think they're going to have to trade Velarde a pick and maybe maybe like. Alex, I have follow a type of that type of player, but I don't, I don't think they want, they definitely aren't going to give up Quinton Byfield. I just don't see that happening. I don't think they want to give him up steel. I just think that if you're going, yeah, yeah. I just can't help but feel that that's the kind of player that the, you know, that they're knocking on for him. And at the end of the day, the LA Kings have been pretty close steel to making a really good run at it. At the end of it all though, I don't know why they're addressing this situation when, it seems that their biggest glaring issue is actually in the cage, especially when we've heard. And look, I mentioned it. We're going to break down all the rumors all week long. There is so much to talk about. We're kicking it off with the big things and we're going to get to Carolina and Jordan Stahl in a second and make sure you tuned in all week long. But it's already been rumored that they don't want to run back Corpus So you have Phoenix Copley under a one year deal left for 1.5. I, you know what I'm saying though? Like where, what's the move here? That's why I can't help but feel that it's not just this, if you know what I'm saying, right? The LA Kings are not just going to be, if it's that move, it can't just be that. There's no way they go into the season investing like that and not in the goal. I just think if Pierre-Luc Dubois does go to LA Steel, I love this situation for him. Really, really do. Love it for him. Love it for their fans. Love it for the organization because they'll have some of the best centermen in the league right now. Anze Kopitar at number one, Pierre-Luc Dubois at number two, Deneau at number three. And if somehow they can keep Byfield, which I don't think he will be at number four, but if they can keep Byfield, he'll be the number four player uh, on on centermen for for the LA Kings. He can also switch up to the left wing side if they really just want to keep him in the top six or in the top nine. I, I agree with you, though. I, I'm not quite sure. Obviously, if you can land a type of player and the caliber of player like Pierre-Luc Dubois, absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. But the big question mark is what's going to happen with the goaltenders? Like you said, Copley, yeah, I Jonas so. Corposalo. Mm-hmm. Copley, who's only under contract for one more year at one and a half, and then Corposalo yeah. again. It's been rumored that they don't want to re-sign right. him, which doesn't so make I don't know what sense. the move is. I don't know what the move is here. So lots more is going to happen. That's what's crazy is like we kind of thought this was going to happen given everything, how it shook out. But yeah, now it really looks like the moves that have already mm-hmm. happened. This week is going to be crazy. Honestly, how we're recording right now for Monday's episode, there could have already been more things happening. So we're going to have to just stay on top of it all week long. We will be staying on top of it. More trades to come. NHL draft this weekend as well. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform. So make sure you hammer that follow button. Hammer the subscribe button on YouTube. We are almost at 850 subscribers. Trying to work our way to 1,000 before next season of the Fantasy Hockey League. We appreciate all that support. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in every single day to your favorite podcast. Jordan Stahl re-signing with his favorite team, captain of the Carolina Hurricanes, re-signs in Carolina for four years, $2.9 million for the captain. Yep. And I I'm, I am almost positive. Maybe they gave him a little bit more, more money, but I was almost positive I hit this right on the nail. Mm. I'm pretty sure three, four years at two and a half or two, 2.6 million. And that's exactly what he got. 
Yeah, and this just it makes a lot of sense. And as much as a guy who scores 34 points in 81 games doesn't exactly jump off the page, he's just so important to this team's chemistry yeah. on ice, off ice. You know, they almost had to make this move. And you know what, Steele? He was actually pretty good in the playoffs. I like watching him in the postseason. I know Carolina fell flat. You can't lay that on Jordan Stahl at all because he actually really led this team at in parts. Two goals, six assists, eight points, uh, you know, almost 18 minutes a night in ice time. I think this makes a lot of sense. And aside from maybe like, you know, uh, an emergency fill-in ad or the very yeah. deep, deep end of like a dynasty league where you're just looking for, you know, a bench spot. Maybe he gets another 30, 35 points this year. I just think this is more of like an emotional move for the Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, for sure. He's been he's been a part of the organization for over 10 years now. And he's been the captain. I can't I can't remember for how much uh, for how many years, but he's been such a such a big key part of this organization uh, and yeah. what they're trying to accomplish right now. They need a leader in the dress room of his stature, and he's the guy that everyone goes to. Um when things are going bad and again in the playoffs he was yep. such a unit just such a beast i agree with you he's the type of guy yep. you you pick up throughout the weeks if you need you need you, you have a, a fill-in spot available for someone he gets yep. the peripheral stats 155 hits for a guy his age is is no is no sloucher is no slouch whatsoever so very, very physical good, guy very he still point. gets some pucks on net 125 shots 40 blocks yep the, the point production has just been very consistent throughout his entire career. You know, started at anywhere between 40 and 50. He's now between 30 and 40. So at this stage in his career, you're not going to get a ton of points, but he brings no. a whole lot to the club of the Carolina Hurricanes. And at the end of the day, too, Steele, we know this is a club that's been knocking on the door as well. They've fallen short very for close. sure. They've had their issues, but I still think, you know, hey – these rumors about Tony D'Angelo as well, this deal might be, you know, yeah. on hold. The deal's in jeopardy. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the blue line is just solid. And if, you know, things shake out how we think they shake out, Pesci is going to get a multi-year deal somewhere else. So it yeah. makes sense that they're trying to bring in another veteran. And I think to shift to D'Angelo, is he a top pairing? No. Is he a third guy? Maybe on a really bad team, but he's a solid fourth really solid fifth and i think he's proven you know that there's been some off ice issues but i don't know steel i think he kind of resurrected himself over the last two and he had arguably his best year his best year of his career playing in carolina two years ago and i think it makes a lot of sense for the hurricanes but to bring up the news latest on this you know the deal needs to be resolved it's hit a snag there's a five million cap hit but i think this is going to get done and i think it makes a lot of sense for carolina I think so too. It's very funny that a year ago he was traded from Carolina to Philadelphia and now he's getting traded again from Philadelphia back to Carolina. I find that very funny, but I agree with you. He had yep. such a very, he had such a redeeming year after all of that happened That's with the it. New York yep. Rangers. He yep. comes to Carolina. They didn't have Brent Burns. He Again, they've gone through a couple of right defensemen. They were at Dougie Hamilton. They had Tony D'Angelo. Now they right. have Brent Burns. They right. love their right shot defensemen who can really step up and be that guy yeah. on the blue line. It's true. And he it's was true. that guy. Now they have Brent Burns. So he would be a great fourth, fifth guy on the blue line for them. And mm -hmm. if you can get him for a little bit cheaper than you can get Brett Pesci, then that's just how yeah. it, that that's just how it has to go for them because you got to look to the future and what your contracts will look like for guys like Sebastian Aho, who's on his last year, Tebow Terabinen, who's on his last year, Martin Nakash, who's on his last year at three mm -hmm. million. He's going to want a big payday. So I get that they really love Brett Pesci. He's 28 years old. He's going to want a big payday. They mm -hmm. might have to move on from him. And they have a ton of young defensemen who are ready to move up for the Carolina Hurricanes. And a really promising young goalie in Kochetkov. Yes. You know, I, I don't think the Carolina Hurricanes realistically are going anywhere. I think they need a big stud up front. And I know Pacioretty was injured. They kind of went for that. It didn't pan out. Sebastian Aho is injured too as well. Sebastian Cause, And you know what here, Steele? And we're not going to get off on a tangent because to me at the end of the day, Tony D'Angelo becomes a very legitimate, again, all these guys are kind of in the same vein. I say a roster fill-in, right? Like the maybe your last backup D drafted or he's, you know, your first week ad if he's had, maybe he slots up that lineup if Pesci doesn't re-sign. 
and he ends up playing a ton of second pairing minutes, who knows? We know the Carolina Hurricanes get a ton of offense from their defense. And lastly, I just wanted to say that I think headed into this offseason as a fantasy GM, you're going to have to, I think, this draft deal take some risks because yeah. of all these moves and all these things in flux. We don't really know. We don't really know. And as much as it's always a prediction in Scamble, I think things are about to get really spicy in the NHL, and we'll be here for all of it. So make sure everyone's tuned here, in top 10. Here for all of it. It's absolutely incredible. Can't believe what's happening right now. There's so much to talk about uh, mm-hmm. what's, what's going on in the NHL, and we will get to a lot of it throughout this next week. Again, the NHL draft is very, very near. Up this weekend, we'll get to the NHL awards. I can't wait to see the fluctuation with the Stanley Cup odds for next season as well after all these trades like what's what are the la kings at right now and what have what will they be at if they acquire pierre luke dubois we got to talk all about it we're gonna have to talk about that maybe for tomorrow's episode we'll have to talk about what's going on between the philadelphia flyers and st louis blues as well rumors around tory krug not wanting to waive his no trade clause because he doesn't want to play in philly either he knows what's up with john tortorella (laughs) nobody wants to be there nonetheless though Big rumors swirling around Danny Breer. He is going full beast mode right now with the offseason moves. He's making his he's making his mark on this Philly team very, very quickly. So we'll have to talk about that to, on tomorrow's episode. But make sure you're tuning in every single day throughout the week. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning is when you can find our episodes. Hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button. And don't be afraid to reach out to any of us. Leave some comments on the YouTube channel. DM us on Twitter as well. We appreciate all the conversations we have with our listeners out there. Have a great day. Good luck with all your summer bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. Buying tickets to see your favorite NHL team shouldn't be stressful. That's where game time comes in. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed.